Well, Merry Christmas. Here we are on Christmas Eve, and my family and I decided to go for the new Cats movie, even though everyone's telling it uh, the reviews are horrible. Who cares? You know what? I saw Cats on Broadway in New York City with the original cast, and I want to tell you something. It's been a lot of years ago. The point is, this movie was totally fun, and we got into it and just enjoyed the music. It took us a little while at first to figure out some of the characters and figure out what was going on, but even so, it was a beautiful little movie, and the music, of course, is wonderful. The actors and actresses were wonderful. The dancing was wonderful. So I do recommend you think about it because it was just a purely enjoyable holiday experience. So something I want to tell you, though, as we're watching it, my husband and I are noticing a couple of the main actresses with crust bites, um, with forward tongue position. And, you know, this is funny. One was actually a class three, looked like a crust bite all the way around, posterior to anterior to posterior, right to left, and forward tongue. And the other one looked more like a unilateral and had the requisite um, asymmetry of the mandible as a result of the crust bite all those developmental years. Now, okay, so they had cross bites. Well, here's the thing that I want to say. These cross bites and these forward tongues have become so much more prevalent in the last two decades while I've been practicing and been looking for them, both because of my interest in airway and because of my interest in orthodontic treatment, especially during development. And here we are looking at all these kids all of these adults with cross bites and then all of our child patients and we see a lot of forward tongue. We see a lot of forward tongue as well as cross bites, which of course occur because as the tongue is more forward, it's not balancing the cheek pressure. So there is now untoward pressure on the cheeks, which maintains the narrowness of the maxilla. And then you have a more narrow maxilla in reference to the normally growing mandible, which is free to grow as it wishes both in an anterior and lateral direction. All right, so here's the thing about that. What's causing it? Oh my gosh, there are so many possibles. Of course, allergens and allergy effectivity, allergen effectivity is one possibility. Foods, all of our processed commercial foods, maybe there's partly the answer there. Um, things that we're breathing, but there's a lot of mouth breathing occurring in our child patients. And that, of course, no matter what its etiology, is absolutely cause and then effect of a forward tongue and a narrow maxilla because of the mouth breathing. Okay, now, having that, oh, and one other thing, are they chewing less? Are they using functionally using their muscles differently? Don't know. Here's the deal. All of this becomes more and more prevalent. I've seen it across ethnicities. In the UAE, we saw so many different ethnicities and it's prevalent in all of them. Of course, we're all eating the Western diet. And so who knows if that's a part of it, but whatever it is, we have a lot of airway issues today. So what can you do? Because you're treating child patients. Number one is identify in the child patient as early as possible that it's going on. You see an infant in mom's arms and they're mouth breathing, that's not normal. That's not okay. Now, you may not be able to do a whole lot about that, but calling it to mom's attention is very important. And the point is this, you need to treat these findings as early as is feasible. For example, you can't expand a cross spike patient until you have two year molars. You, you could try, but you're not going to be real effective. So you're waiting then until almost age three. Unfortunately, that is the reality, but at least by age three, you can get a quad helix in there and do skeletal expansion, opening the suture. You can actually get them to an ENT for continued monitoring after you find an ENT who is aware and concerned about developmental narrow maxillas, mouth breathing, low tongue, and all of the relationships. Because remember, the American Academy of Pediatrics says very plainly since 2002, I believe, in their literature, that the absolute treatment, first line of treatment in these children is tonsillectomy and or adoidectomy as is appropriate. Usually that's going to solve a huge percentage, if not 90 to 100% of the etiologies of the problems that are going on 
and increase the um, good growth potential, not the adverse growth that's been going on. So some thoughts for you here. Go see cats. It was just a delightful experience for us. Don't let yourself get into all the details of why wasn't it a great movie. I thought it was fun. The music's fabulous. And look at your child patients. Remember to look for open mouth posture when they're just sitting there. Remember to look for mouth breathing. Remember to be aware and then to figure out when, how soon, and how you might treat. And of course, we can help with that. That's what we teach all the time. So Merry Christmas, doctors. Have a wonderful, wonderful season. Love you.